decision making throughout the process and how. Question number two, are you working with community leaders and groups to identify barriers to participation and develop custom tools to reduce those barriers and how? Question three, do you have mechanisms in place for consistent communication with community partners to evaluate progress and be responsive to questions or concerns that arise after tree planting? And what are they? And then the last question, are you tracking mutually agreed upon environmental outcomes associated with use of equitable community engagement strategies? Um, and I, I always love getting to listen to Dr. Carmichael talk and, and I'm happy to share out some of her uh, training sessions that she did for the Alliance for Community Trees Network. Um, those are all individually recorded and uploaded to YouTube so I can share those out if there's um, a desire there. Um, another one of my favorites was Majora Carter. Um, and so she, Majora is an American urban revitalization strategist who's led some environmental justice solutions in the Bronx in New York. Um, her presentation was titled Community as Corporation, Talent Retention Strategies for Low Status America. And so some of her bullet points for talent retention strategy are beauty, high quality built environments, commercially viable year round social spaces, making sure it promotes community and not a community center quality housing for local residents with good paying jobs, making sure the strategy doesn't conflate poverty as a cultural attribute, and then making sure the strategy feels great. Um, and then I think one of the sessions that ended the partners conference that I just found fascinating was uh, the Greenheart Louisville project. And so the, this presentation is called Examining the Effects of Planting on Air Pollution and Cardiovascular Health. So this is a project that I'm sure a lot of you have heard a lot about the past couple of years, but I, I just found it so interesting to hear from all the PhDs involved, the Nature Conservancy, as well as the local planting partner, which is Louisville Grows, on the ins and outs of this project. And I'm sure that all of the groups here wish we had the time, capacity, and resources to implement projects of this nature. Um, so that's kind of my overview of the conference. Every year we send out a post-conference survey. We're big on the net promoter score here at the Arbor Day Foundation. Um, sorry, I'm just seeing some, some questions here. Yeah, so the live streams were recorded right now. Um, our marketing team, they are kind of splicing them all up. So we'll have them as individual links that we can send out. I don't have a timeline on that currently, but I'm hoping at the beginning of the calendar year, we'll be able to, to share some of those. Um, so like I was saying, we're, we're really big on the net promoter score at the Arbor Day Foundation. And so we send out a really simple post-conference survey. Um, this year we sent it as the conference was ending, just so everything's top of mind, um, just gives you a score of one to 10. And if you were, how likely you are to recommend this event and then just an open field for comments. And so for those that may not be as familiar with Net Promoter Score, I think anything 50 and above is considered excellent. Anything 70 and above is world-class. And so we had a score of 71.5 for the Partners Conference. And then a whopping, let's see, 84.7 for Alliance for Community Trees Day. And so that's always How really, do you get numbers like that when you only take a score of one to 10? So, I mean, you are, taking your detractors and passives and subtracting them from yeah. your promoters. Um, okay, so it's a complicated algorithm. It's a complicated thing that people- well, congratulations. Yeah. You don't just do averages. You just don't do averages, take. it's very specific. Okay. Um, and, and it's always nice going through the comments. So one thing, if you put on events like this, one thing you are always going to get comments on 
is the food. The food is one of the hardest things to get right at a freaking event like this. And I don't know if it's just being in Kentucky and the food was uh, awful this year. With, with, it was awful. Well, for for vegan and vegetarians, it's 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 always hard to accommodate, and yeah. it's hard for the conference centers to to get those right and to to make sure that those folks aren't waiting longer than than other folks to get their food. It's always always hard to to do that. But I mean, other comments are it's. You could really just tell how happy people were to be back in person, to see people and to learn from people. People really loved just the, the topics that were shared um, around environmental justice and community engagement. Um, one that I thought was interesting was for Alliance for Community Trees Day would be to have a workshop or to have workshop like sessions where people can collaborate and work towards a goal such as grant writing, starting a new program, et cetera. Uh, and then just the comment on there being a lot of sitting and so the interactive workshops could help with that. And so that's always something we we struggle with because I know for ACT day, we have this one day and we, we really try to squeeze as much in as we can. Um, yeah, people just love the opportunity to meet people in their field, learn about the way they run their organizations. Um, just seeing all these negative comments about my facilitation, just kidding. Um, but yeah, and, and just really trying to focus on a variety, ensuring there's a variety of speakers. But um, I think I will stop talking for a little bit unless other people have some questions. Thank you, Matt. Um, and we did have a UEC gathering. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday night. No, it wasn't Thursday night. Maybe Wednesday night. Um, where a couple of folks from UEC came together. We had drinks. Matt joined us and he said, hey, I want to be part of this cool group. So here he is. Thanks for including me. Thanks for joining. And again, thank you for a wonderful conference. Quick question for me. Uh, do you know where next year's is going to be yet? Has that been determined? Great question. So, I mean, because of COVID, we typically have these trips before um, the current conference. And so that way we're able to announce it at the end of the week. Um, my colleagues just made those trips last week, and so we don't know where it's going to be quite yet. Um, I honestly don't know if I'm at liberty to say where we're looking, but I'm going to tell you because I know I can trust you all. Um, and just make sure, like, if, if it gets out that you heard it from Dan Lamb and you didn't hear it from me. So last week, uh, my colleagues went to Seattle. They went to... Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they went to Baton Rouge. And so I don't know if that's just the final three and we're picking from those. I know we're getting some, some strong advocates from Boise to go there, um, but we know people can't really drive in to Boise. Like there's not really major areas that, that close by within 10 hours, I don't know. So I know that's a big, a big part too, because in Louisville, a lot of people were able to drive in. So that was kind of helpful, but. And I'll just do a, a quick plug. If, if any organization would like to join the Alliance for Community Trees Network, you can send me a note. You can go to arborday.org slash alliance. Uh, to read more or slash ACT member if you want to join. Uh, my email is in the chat. If you ever want to reach out, um, happy to chat more if you'd like. Thank you, awesome. Matt, for joining. Yeah, go ahead, Kinsey. I was just going to say thank you. <laughs> it was great to hear the overview. I'm glad to hear that the conference went, went well um, and Looking forward to hearing about the, the future conferences as well. Uh, so on that note, I think heading into our, our own our own year in review, David, do you want to take that away? Yeah, I will. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, any any other comments from folks before I transition over to um, to our year in review? I took some notes on what Matt said.
I mean, it was all, always good to network. Uh, Arbor Day folks were so generous with their time. I know the staff here at Speak for the Trees, it was their first time going and they just loved meeting people, so. All right, onwards then. I just wanted to give a quick update on a couple of things that we've been doing here at uh, UEC uh, uh, from 2021 as we close out the year. So uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but our website is a lot more is a lot easier to navigate now. Um, it's still not perfect, but it, it's a lot cleaner um, and we hope to continue improving it. Um, we wanna eventually perhaps post videos on it and uh, update the members page. Uh, but it, I think more than anything, it's just easier to sign up and figure out what we're doing. Um, a couple of other uh, improvements we've done is um, we've created a Google group. And like I said, if you're a member of the group, it's easy to post um, to that group directly. You don't have to send it out to me or Kinsey to repost. Uh, we have a calendar feature where you can just subscribe to this um, and you will get uh, notifications or not notifications. It will automatically update in your calendar, our meetings. And then we've posted all our talks on YouTube. We have a YouTube station or channel, whatever they call it. So I'm just going to post those three things real quick in the chat. Um, and you know, sometimes those little things, um, first of all, take longer than you think to do. But then they also uh, make a big difference um, in making the rest of our lives easier. Um, Kinsey, am I missing anything on this technology front? Um, I don't think so. Um, aside from uh, Speak for the Trees headed up the website revisions. So uh, big thanks to David and uh, yeah, we had an intern working on that. Go ahead, Dexter. I was just going to say thank you for bringing us into this century. Um, when I stepped down as co-chair, there was a lot of manual stuff. We were like one step above a couple of tin cans with string. <laughs> and so this, this level of professionalization has made it um, really easy for me to direct people like I know it's spring because students are asking me, what about internships? And I can just say, hey, this is the community you gotta get plugged into. And I can just send a link and it makes my life easy. And the calendar is great. And so just thank you for, for that, that major, um, it's more than a facelift, you know, it really um, makes this network look great. Thanks, happy to do it. We all care about, we all care about it. You know, so it's it's nice to be part of a community of people who care. And I think one of the issues we faced was that the Google, people were a little resistant to Google Groups because they were worried about the emails overflowing. Uh, but you all have been, I think, really respectful of not overposting. Um, so we're happy to continue that. You know, if it becomes an issue, we don't want to see people dropping out because of, it becomes a spam space. So. Uh, use it judiciously, but use it, you know, appropriately. And I think people have been. Uh, so quickly, I just wanted to go over, and I think all of these, or if not all of them, then almost all of them are on our YouTube channel. Uh, just quickly, the, the talks we gave this year, uh, starting in January, um, just listing them out here. A range of, of speakers from the community level to the federal level, right? Uh, so we had Carol speak. Um, from Maryland, we had Amy. I think she was, I want to say the Southwest. Uh, was she Albuquerque? No, I can't remember where she was. I don't from. recall, um, but yes, the Southwest. Ashley, who used to be here in Massachusetts and now is out in California. Mark, Urban FIA, which I think um, amazed all of us what, what the US Forest Service is doing with forest inventory. Um, we had Casey from DC. We had Erica from Philadelphia, former UEC chair, um, Katie from Baltimore Green Space, uh, Mike from DC, and then Deanna here from um, Boston, who works on, uh, sorry, I don't have the title of her talk here, but I think there was a lot of interest in her talk. If you missed it, um, I suggest you revisit it, but talking about um, ordinances and the work that her foundation has done around tree ordinances. Um, so with that, 
Kinsey, I know you have to leave early, so I'm just going to turn it over to you to run this activity before you have to jump off. Sure. Yeah. So um, with the overview of uh, everything we did this year, I wanted to open it up to uh, everyone here to do a rose and thorn exercise. If you haven't done this before, rose is just something good that happened this year. Thorn is something bad or something challenging. And bud is something that you're looking forward to. So I have a couple example, question, example questions that you could answer, um, but you can also give any other answers that you have. Um, I just want to know what's, what's happening with everybody here as well. Um, I made the mistake of not thinking about this for myself ahead of time. So now I'm also thinking about it. <laughs> Um, but feel free to sound off, um, take, your, take yourself off of mute or raise your hand. Um, would love to hear Erica. Yeah, I think I kind of just did this at a different meeting the other day. So uh, David, this will be a repeat for you probably, but uh, I'm really proud of, uh, I planted my first trees in the city of Boston on land that I don't own. So that's, uh, that's always good. <laughs> um, we planted 10 trees with our youth program. Uh, and we've been like, we put fences around them and we put signage with QR codes and I could put the link in the chat if people are interested, but uh, we're hoping to follow those trees, set an example of what actually taking care of those looks like. And it, it wasn't that simple because I work in an Olmstead park. So there's historic designs and landmarks commissions and all kinds of things in addition to trying to get a community, <laughs> community input on that. So the thorn, thorn for me is definitely that you know, at my organization, we're not exceptional at getting community input and getting the communities engaged that are around our parks. Um, a lot of people we work with are sort of, um, you know, it's all sides. It's like preservation, biodiversity from some residents, but not all like, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a challenge. Um, so I, I learned a lot from, from kind of seeing that be a problem this year. And then a bud, I have a program that I am working on um, somewhat independently, um, I did get some U.S. Forest Service, like a temporary intern through them to work on this, but it's called the New Roots Collaborative, and it would be a returning citizens program um, in Boston, starting out with a pilot of just two people, but uh, we're still researching um, how to serve incarcerated individuals and, you know, their families and other people in impacted by that traumatic situation. So uh, that's mine. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Erica. Um, I can I can go. Uh, my rose is I began working for a tree care company out here in Pittsburgh that uh, focuses on preservation. So the majority of work that I've been doing is um, preservation pruning of large trees. And so there's not like a whole lot of removals, which is a really cool model for tree care. One that I hope kind of takes takes root, takes off in the industry, on this side of the industry, um, because, because it's important. And uh, I, think, I think that's really cool. So I've been enjoying being a part of that. Um, it's, it's been challenging. Like I, I enjoy cheering all of you on from the, from the sidelines, but I do miss uh, doing some of this community work. So being in the UEC and hearing um, the steps that people are taking has been uh, a, great, a great boon while I, while I watch from the sides. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, next year and seeing, and, and the future in general, to see how uh, we can meld tree care as an industry with community forestry and the different ways that we can overlap. Because right now, I think there's a bit of a disconnect. So thinking about that overlap and where we can unite is uh, something that I'm very interested in and passionate about. Anybody else? Okay, well, I'll go, I guess. Yeah. So, um, so I, I think what, at least Tree Baltimore, what we've done, that we feel we're really uh, proud of is how we've um, gone through our tree giveaways uh, during the pandemic and how we've refined them uh, to make them efficient. And we pretty much have gone entirely to uh, an order, online order system um, and then a pickup and then how smoothly and efficiently that's done through pickup um, and getting people to pick up their trees. And then how our tree keepers program, um, how we've 
worked out the kinks in the virtual classes because we're not allowed to have a certain amount of people in, in, in any in-person thing. Um, and then how we've intensified the in-person parts, smaller in-person sessions for planting and pruning and um, how to make them more intense in the instruction before they go out to do their volunteer plantings for certification. Um, and if we wanted a moment of joy uh, during one of those personal sessions, I had um, a couple of a couple that came up to me and said that they'd signed up and they'd done the in-person planting instruction and that they they weren't sure how much they were going to learn. And they'd done a bunch of plantings with Casey trees in D.C., but that they learned so much more. So and that brought me a big smile to I felt we were really doing um, uh, having an impact in uh, getting proper planting instruction going on. And then challenges, I work for the city. So procurement, staffing, that's all in there. Um, uh, I don't know if I could really think of an interaction I could learn from right now. Um, what are we excited to implement? Um, going forward, we're really working on um, doing some um, more work on um, increasing uh, species selection, both in our orders um, and um, giveaways. And that has to do with some new contracts that finally came through um, with the wording of that. And who am I looking forward to meeting? All the people that interact with Tree Baltimore, of course. Thanks, Fred. That was great to hear about some, some lovely moments of joy. It makes me smile. <laughs> Uh, if anybody else wants to chime in, feel free. Otherwise, we can move on to the next uh, discussion discussion section, specifically about UEC. Well, I'm just uh, really happy that now I there's staff at Speak for the Trees that's full time and part time, and that's just such a joy to feel that kind of accomplishment and, and the work that you know that exponential growth, I think, when you bring in staff. But th that also brings challenges, right? Um, because now building out that infrastructure to support staff, um, all the paperwork that goes along with that and the valuations and, and, the, and the management, is, is it's different and, it, and there's challenges and we're growing into that. Um, but we're really excited this year to uh, or I should say in 2022, um, and Erica, you'll be hearing more about this um, as we roll it out, is developing these community tree walks that center on people's stories and lived experiences with their local or historical trees. Um, and that hopefully, knock on wood, will be sponsored with an EPA grant that has been, um, what's the word they use? Not provisionally granted, but uh, preliminarily granted. I think there's some federal paperwork right now that's being sorted out, but we hope to be able to announce that early in 2022 um, and we're already starting to do that project. So it's gonna be really exciting. And uh, hopefully Matt will talk about fractals in that work. Inside Joe. Awesome. Um, thanks for sharing, David. I need to leave. Um, so I wanted to thank everybody for coming. It was great to hear some of your updates and I look forward to watching the rest of them in the recording. Um, so with that, I will formally hand the meeting over to David and I will see you all next month. All right, any other uh, roses and thorns? Um, hi, this is Zoe from Blue Water, Baltimore. Um, I was just going to add in um, our thoughts from Blue Water, Baltimore about our tree planting program. Um, we have had such a great time working with volunteers during the pandemic to plant trees. Um, start. We took the, the spring season off in 2020, but we've been going steady since then. And just the response we've gotten that it's like one of the few things people feel like they can do in person and feel safe about um, being outdoors, you know, working with our hands and doing something as a group. Uh, it's just been like really lovely to be a part of 
part of it. And um, we just keep having these like dedicated volunteers coming out again and again, but also lots of new people. Um, and just feeling like we're really building something in Baltimore City um, has been awesome. And we're continuing that. Um, I think some of the challenges are still, you know, uh, we do a lot of street tree projects in front of people's homes. And so kind of continuing to figure out what our engagement process is with residents and how to have more of a two-way conversation with folks um, instead of just saying, you know, trees are good for you, we're gonna put one in front of your house. Um, and so we're really trying to deepen that process. Um, we're now allowing people to opt out of receiving a tree, um, but there's just so many layers of like reasons why folks don't want trees um, and doing a lot of questioning of work around like being a mostly white nonprofit working in a largely black city and in black communities. And so like the disconnect there. Um, and so having to like kind of look at the way we're doing our work and ask more questions. And so that for, for us has been a challenge um, and things that we're learning from as we're working in the field. But um, I'm looking forward to like broadening and deepening that process as an organization. Welcome, Zell, and thank you. Uh, is this your first UEC meeting? No, no I've no. been but several. Lurking. Yeah, lurking. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, the, the faces, I'm, I'm more of a, a facial recognition person. I don't know if I've seen you on video. Well, welcome, and thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. It's great to hear everyone's stories. Any others? I was trained as an educator, so uncomfortable silence. I live in that, right? You're supposed to wait 15 seconds or so. My students hated it. All right, so uh, let's wrap up. Uh, you know, we have sort of two prompts here. Uh, first, what can we do better in 2022? And what are places that, you know, we can learn and, and grow? Um, these monthly meetings and, and perhaps, you know, additional projects. Um, and then we also wanted to talk about topics um, that you're looking forward to hearing and learning more about in the coming year. So uh, th this is a, this first question is more of a open dialogue. And then the second one, you know, um, I actually have a survey queued up that I can drop in the chat window um, and you can do in the comfort of your own home to uh, help us think through who we should be reaching out to and, and different topics you're interested in. So um, if folks have thoughts on, oops, on what we can do better in 2022 as a community, and that's you know either me and, me and Kinsey, of course, but it's also all of us here today. I think you guys are doing a pretty fantastic job. I mean, I came into this group in 2021, so um, I don't have that long of a experience with it, but I think you guys are doing well um, to, to incorporate new people and expose them to new ideas. So thank you for that. Um, I would say for me, sometimes a morning meeting on a weekday is hard for me to make like in real time, but the recordings kind of make up for that. So um, for me, it's like an afternoon preference, but that's just a personal thing. So. Um, just great job. Question here, and I was as I was reflecting on 2022, we have a website, we have a listserv, we have not done any social media. Um, is that something that people see any benefit for us to consider? And it could just be, you know, one of the big three. It doesn't have to be all of them or one of the big four, I should say, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Would there be, I'm uh, just curious, you know, it's another task for us to do, but if there's benefit to it, then maybe it's something we should consider. I'm curious to hear what people have to say. Oh, 
people in the chat. Yeah, David Hey, this is Sarah oh. from the Forest Service. I uh, I popped a couple questions in the chat. Um, I'm just I'm just curious if folks have reflections about how connected you all feel to your state forest urban forest coordinators, um, and how you all feel poised organizationally for a potential significant funding bump bump from the federal government. Um, whether there might be opportunities to kind of network and think about shovel ready projects or um, you know even even some of the work around uh, workforce development previously incarcerated individuals any conversations that might this network might benefit from that we could have in early in the new year so that folks feel ready and prepared for anything that might happen down the road I love that Those are, suggestion yeah. Sarah yeah we're, we're working a lot on that so that would be helpful yeah, Sarah, if you might have names um, of folks who would be appropriate and interested in, in joining us, um, I would, you know, feel free to share them directly with me or post them here in the chat. And we can maybe have a conversation or maybe I'll just reach out to you individually. Yeah, for sure. For starters, we could um, certainly connect and introduce you to, I mean, at the at the federal level, we have two new urban and community forestry program managers for the Forest Service. Um, and, you know, th they're gonna be most likely handling a lot of the grants and stuff that might that might come to, come to fruition. And then certainly if you're not familiar with your state coordinators, we can just make those names available. Um, probably many of you are, but I would just encourage you to sort of nurture those in-state relationships as well. But that sounds great, David. I'll be glad to follow up with you. Thank you. Yeah, I know that um, the bill, I think you're referring to the Build Back Better bill has, I believe, uh, probably more than 3 billion, but 3 billion specific allotted to tree equity. And there's probably pockets of money and other sort of tucked away in, in workforce development or something. 2 yeah, exactly. It's it's hard to keep track of that, or, you know, it can be hard to keep track of the names, but Build Back Better, Reconciliation, Budget, they're all one and the same. So right now we're under the continuing resolution and we've kind of kicked the can until early next year. And then hopefully some sort of budget will pass. And as it's currently written, it does have a very significant up, bump up from about 40 million annually for urban and community forestry to maybe 2.5, 3 billion annually over a 10 year period. So fingers crossed for all of our sakes. Matt, how much of a cut do you get of that? Um, nothing. <laughs> no, sorry, I was, I was asking Matt. Oh. <laughs> you probably, yeah. Same, nothing. Nothing, Matt? Just to say. Huh? Oh. Yeah, re I mean, research isn't written into it. Right now, It's it would probably, you know, be funneled through state and private urban and community forestry program. But, you know, it could be that organizations like the Arbor Day uh, successfully compete for or however that is distributed. So we always love to see our partners supported. And then Sarah, do you can you speak at all to so the money that's come through from the from the infrastructure bill? So I know is that all funneling through the Department of Transportation? Because after reading through, there is some urban work involved in that. I know some like disaster and fire recovery type of things in mitigation. Do you know how community groups can get can get involved in that? Oh, Matt, I wish I had a better answer for you. Yeah, when it comes to a lot of the urban tree stuff, I mean, it's it's the Department of Transportation really has a um, now a mandate, I guess you could call it, to look to look at these areas where uh, trees could significantly improve overall health in neighborhoods, and that that's a, I mean, that that's a real advancement. I mean, despite what we all know, I mean, for the longest time, I think neighborhood environmental quality has been determined solely by things like brown fields and stuff like super fun proximity super fun sites and stuff like that it hasn't been about tree canopy cover and now it is more more explicitly we're trying to make some of those same inroads with dot and others um so i'm not aware currently of any of sort of urban or research related funds that are channeling through usda but like you say fire is part of it things like that so sorry, I'm not very helpful there. <laughs> I'll, 
I'll mention Matt. I'll I'll, I'll um, connect you to a person who who might be able to give you a little bit more info. So. Yeah, that'd be great. I appreciate that. And as I talked to Beatrice Wilson, and and mentioned the infrastructure bill, she's like, we're as of right now, we're not involved at all with that. So. Okay, well, I was gonna I was gonna mention Miranda Hutton, who's been detailing okay. under Beatra. So if you connected with Beatra directly, that was the last I'd heard from her too, but I wasn't sure. So yeah, that's probably all we know. All right, folks. Well, I just dropped uh, a link in the chat window with a oh, hopefully shareable. Let me make sure I have the right settings here. Um, uh, someone mind just making sure that that link works there? It does. Thank you, Danielle. Yeah, no yeah. problem. So if you don't mind just taking a couple of minutes, um, I'll send out a link again to the group. Um, just fill that out um, and help us think ahead to 2022. Um, that would be helpful. And if you have specific names to drop in there. The other question I had just to go back, uh, I didn't hear any resounding any any comments on the social media question so if you have thoughts let me know uh, but the other question is um i know the organizations are all listed on our or many of the partnering organizations are all listed on the website if your organization is not listed and you want to be listed please let us know the other question we've been wondering is do people want um their names listed as partners and you know we haven't done that something to consider um so we get to know each other, or maybe it's behind a password protected thing where people can look each other up. Um, so with that, um, Kinsey and I weren't, weren't sure if we'd actually fill up the full two hours, but as usual, we did. Um, here are some guiding questions as you think about you know, the, the survey. Um, what are some topics that of, of interest from partners. Um, what about this year's UEC? What what you do find most interesting? Um, and are there any partners you'd like to hear from or topics we should consider for 2022? So join us. We'll continue to meet Wednesdays, third, was it third Wednesdays of the month at 10? Uh, but Erica, thank you for your comment. I think that's something for us to consider is maybe um, having every other talk in the afternoon or something. Um, I, Dexter, I don't know the history of why it was third one say at 10 was chosen, but. I don't either. I think it falls into, well, we've always done it that way. Um, it's the only, only world I've ever known. Um, changing the time would potentially make it more accessible. Um, I don't know. It works for me. I'm one of 200 people on this list serve though, so. All right, well, thank you everyone. Um, have a great new year and Christmas if you celebrate it and uh, we'll see you in 2022, hopefully with a speaker. <laughs> Thanks everyone, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.